Hey YouTube, welcome back, Leo Potzel, you know what it is, that's the channel. Thanks very much for tuning in guys. Today's episode is Season 1, Episode 3 of the 75 gallon to 125 gallon documentary. Here I am taking you back on some of my original YouTube videos on my 75 gallon back in 2011, 2012. And I wanted to bring back these videos to you guys and recap and go over a few things that I've learned along the way. And a few tips and tricks so stay tuned guys and I'm gonna be showing you what's going on so we're gonna do a quick recap on what we did on episode 2 uh, episode 2 what we did here is we added this 35 gallon frag tank to the system which is all tied into the same sump filtration so on the left hand side here you can see there's the drain pipe and on the right hand side there is the pump return line so what we've done here is we took this drain line and we rooted it all the way to behind the 75 gallon tank into the sump so here's the 75 gallon tank and we ran in the drain line into behind the sump so looking at the sump on the right hand side is where we have the return pumps we have two return pumps and on the left hand side here is where you, we have the two drains coming in and if you actually look closely there's three drains and I'll tell you why shortly and again like I said on the right hand side we have two submergible pumps one's running the 75 gallon and one's running the frag tank And another thing we covered in episode 2 was the auto top off. This auto top off is a gravity feed auto top off that I installed a float valve from a dehumidifier into my sump filtration where the return pumps are located in the last chamber. And from there I ran a quarter inch tubing, an RO line tubing, uh, which basically runs from the back of the float valve. And you can see there it's dripping in water when I push it down. And that quarter inch line runs to behind the tank here all the way to the left which is ran into a five gallon bucket here on the left side of my tank and at which I drilled a hole at the side of the bucket and I siliconed in a brass fitting which I don't recommend using a brass fitting and all you have to do is just make sure that this bucket is elevated higher than your sump and it will just be gravity fed. A next thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is the protein skimmer right here on the backhand side. It's a protein skimmer and it's an external protein skimmer and it's working right now as you're looking at it. I don't have much footage but this is the footage that I have and I slowed it down so you guys can briefly see it. This external protein skimmer has two basically uh, pumps at the bottom of it that make the, the skimmer work in this little housing and it creates bubbles and then from there I had to run a submergible pump that runs inside my sump which feeds the skimmer so if you look into my sump right there I have in the second chamber on the left hand side I have a pump there and it's running that skimmer and then from there the skimmer would do its thing do its little bubbles and then from there the outflow of the skimmer would return back into my sump in the very first chamber the skimmer adjustment was done via the two valves, one on the outflow of the skimmer and one on the intake of the skimmer. So I had to install two valves on the skimmer system, which was the intake to the skimmer via the pump and the outtake via the skimmer via the, just the hose that was running into my sump filtration system. All right, well, I think we're ready now to start episode three, now that we've recapped briefly on episode two. If you haven't watched all of it, go ahead and check it out the video. Season one, episode two of 75 gallon to 125 gallon coral reef documentary. So here we are, July 2012, and my 75 gallon tank, my very first saltwater tank. And we're looking at this tank and trying to recap as much as we can and go through some of my YouTube videos that I've published. And I'm glad that I published those videos onto YouTube as I don't really have many other videos saved or on storage or anything. So here we are going back to July in 2012 on my 75 gallon saltwater coral reef fish tank. And if, as we look at the tank, everything looks like everything is fine and dandy and doing okay. But until I show you the sump filtration system. The sump tank is fine, nothing's wrong with the tank at all, it was working great. The problem was my skimmer. So my in sump submergible protein skimmer crapped out on me. It stopped working as the pump just gave out and I decided to go ahead and buy another used skimmer which is the external protein skimmer that I showed you earlier. That one also crapped out on me a few months later. 
the pump itself and the whole situation and it being external is why I don't uh, recommend using external skimmers because if it ever gets to overflow it's going to overflow onto your floor and make a big mess and especially with that one that I had it had two external pumps that were used to create the bubbles inside the skimmer so therefore um, those pumps would get wet if the skimmer were to ever overflow and getting an external pump wet is not a good idea well with no hesitation I went right along and built myself another sump filtration system okay for this next part of this video what I'm going to do here is play back the original audio and video that was taken back in 2012 when I was building this sump filtration system so stay tuned guys while I play back some of the original audio and video when the sump was built I just purchased a uh a vertex IN180 skimmer submergible there you go is the sump I have it laid out it's gonna start from that end work its way through over here to the return pump so as you can see I have these glass pieces already cut just finished cutting them and Sanding them down, just getting prepped up here. So this is going to be my uh, first cycle right here. This is where the water is going to come in from the overflow. So from the sump, it's going to come in from this section first. And uh, I'm going to put, uh, for the most part, some live rock and filter floss here. The water is going to travel through here, up over this glass, down underneath this glass, and then this whole section from that tape to that tape is going to be for the skimmer. The skimmer is just there out of the way for now, but I'm going to place the skimmer right there in the middle. The skimmer calls for uh, 10 inches by 14 and a half. So I'm going to give it roughly 16 inches there. To the right of the skimmer is this section right here. Uh, I want to put, I'm going to put a refugium here. It's kind of small, but uh, I'm going to see if I can try to squeeze in a little refugium here. Some chato and uh, live rock and put a light on top there and then from there that section right here at the bottom from here to here is going to be uh, where the return pump is going to be and I'll just go back and tie my tank those are two old skimmers that I had going and uh, this is going to be the new 40 gallon sump the tank dimensions are roughly uh, 14 inches wide 14 inches tall by uh, roughly 44 inches long if I remember correctly that's roughly the measurement pretty decent sized sump the sump is not going to actually fit underneath my tank I'm going to have to run it to the side of the tank uh, for this reason because the, the sump that I have right now will not hold this new skimmer that I have this internal skimmer so I decided to make a new sump I just uh, made actually this tank yesterday it's not an old tank it's a new tank brand new uh, it's actually 3 8 glass just cut it to size pretty straightforward there's videos out there you can see on how to make a tank but now I'm just making it into a sump so uh, the last tank I made was a frag tank I drilled out the bottom you can check out that and on how to do that it's pretty uh, same thing that was a frag tank that was like 8 inches by 8 inches by 36 inches this is uh, another tank roughly 40 gallon 14 by 14 by 44 so there you have it, there's the sump set up with design and uh, this is what I came up with. Well guys, that was some raw footage of me building my sump back in 2012 and um, I wish I had some more footage for you guys of me siliconing in the baffles and everything but um, I guess that's what happens when you don't record stuff guys. So again, another uh, thing that I remind you guys to do within this hobby is document everything by videoing it and doing pictures as well guys and I encourage you as well to load up your videos on YouTube and do exactly what I'm doing as I find it quite interesting to take a look at other people's systems as well well guys now that we got the sump all built and ready to go let's see this bad boy in action and I think the best way for me to explain to you how the sump was working is for me to play back some of the original videos from 2012 that I published on YouTube. I just drilled a little hole at the side of the stand, pretty straightforward, put a couple of elbows there, put a nice little flex pipe so I can move it. 
and this is basically the the sump right here it's a 40 gallon sump uh, it's roughly 16 inches by 16 inches by uh, what was that 40 inches long I know I got some wires here a little bit of a mess but uh, for the most part everything is safe and it is okay so I'm just gonna go through this with you the water is coming down through this white and gray pipe right here coming down from the tank gravity fed and now uh, you can get an idea about the amount of water that's coming out of there so for the most part uh, I just got some bio balls in there I got some live rock the water, the water filters through these uh, baffles right here there's a piece of filter floss you can see right there filter floss here's my skimmer vertex skimmer IN 180 works flawless top notch no complaints at all got two heaters in there keep my temperature where I want just a little uh, little pump right here stirring up the water in my refugium not too much going on in the refugium I've hadn't had much luck with it but for the most part it is going no complaints everything is okay another piece of filter floss through these baffles and there you got it the uh, auto top off works fantastic no complaints and then your pump that's returning the water back inside your tank so there you have it there's a return pump float valve and that's uh, if you follow this line right here this line is basically just going straight into this bucket which gravity fed over the tank and it just drips in every time the water evaporates from the display tank and from the sump it just gravity fed drips in into the uh, into the sump so you don't have to worry about the water level changing on you and your pump running dry and whatnot so and that was really inexpensive works flawlessly I've had it running for months now no complaints at all I totally recommend it if anyone needs any help I can help you definitely with that but there's your uh, skimmer working top-notch this thing I can clean it every week and it's always pulling out stuff so well guys there you have it again some more raw footage from July 2012 playing back some of my original videos that I loaded up on YouTube guys and I just wanted to share with you guys again my videos and a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and again you know what the channel is all about to help other people within the hobby and just in general you know we're just here to help everybody and to entertainment as well so guys a few things that I wanted to point out regarding the sump it is very important when you're building your sump uh, to know what you want to keep inside your tank as in fish and corals and whatnot so again you'll know what your sump will need to hold um, for an example you got to make that decision that everyone's trying to make am I going to squeeze a refugium inside my sump or not um, another thing that I wanted to point out is um, the skimmer the protein skimmer guys if you're going to be building a sump or whatever figure out what kind of protein skimmer you're going to be using uh, figure out the blueprint that dimensions the exact size of it uh, the depth of water that is uh, recommended for it to be sitting in if it's an in sump protein skimmer again my personal pre preference I'm not crazy about external protein skimmers but that's just my experience within the hobby and I've never really used a hang on the back protein skimmer for any of my systems but I've had to use them for my client systems and they do from what I see work as well so guys thanks very much for watching it's Leo Pot, so you know what it is that's the channel I hope you guys learned a few things here and there along the way within this video this is season one episode three it's a 75 gallon to the 125 gallon coral reef documentary and I'm taking you guys back from 2011 2012 13 14 15 all the way to where we are today guys and my 125 gallon coral reef tank so thanks very much Leo Pozzo you know what it is go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed till next time